Germany has, it seems, accepted that it must return priceless works of art looted and stolen during colonial times. Most spectacularly, authorities here in Berlin have now agreed to hand back to Nigeria at least a share of a huge collection of plundered artefacts known as the Benin Bronzes. It's being called a turning point in Germany's approach to its colonial history. So on to the point we ask, Africa's stolen treasures, is it time to give them back? Well, thanks very much indeed for joining us here on the show. And with me in the studio are Miniaka Sururu Mboro from the campaign group Berlin Postcolonial, who says more important than the return of cultural artifacts is the return of the remains of our ancestors. Also with us is Professor Bonaventure Sobe Jeng Dikung. He is a Cameroon born curator and educator who believes it is no secret that colonialism is, in all its forms, a crime against humanity. And a warm welcome to, to the acclaimed anthropologist Carola Lenz, who joins us on the line from Mainz, the Western German city. Uh, she is at the same time president of Germany's Goethe Institute, and she argues that the long overdue return of artifacts from the colonial period in, is also an opportunity for cultural exchange between Germany, Europe, and the countries of origin. A lot to talk about. Uh, Miniakra, I would like to begin with you, if I may, uh, and a figure. Experts say that at least 80% of Africa's cultural heritage is housed in European museums. A lot of it's simply gathering dust. It seems shocking to me. How does it seem to you? It is. It is also shocking to me. And believe me, I have been, I have been an activist for quite a long time, demanding these artifacts. And in that long period where you have been an activist, what has changed in the battle that you have been yeah, taking part in? What has changed that you find in the last five years, at least we are coming to kind of negotiating together, mm -hmm. but not really. But what really surprised me it is when I heard that German has decided to give the Benin bronze back. Was the feeling you had that the, here was a possible big leap forward in the making? Yes, for me, I see this is a step coming to a process of healing because it will heal the wounds which we have. And also, it is a, an aspiration of all the other artifacts to be returned back to Africa. And please, there I thought, yes, my ancestors' remains, which are housed in museums, in clinics, in universities, all over here in Germany will be returned back. And I said, I prayed for that, that I see as a start. Okay. Fascinating words. Thank you very much for sharing that with you. And uh, let's go to Carola Lenz in Mainz. Carola, uh, the German Foreign Minister Heiko Maas, reflecting what we've just been hearing, says the return of the Benin Bronzes represents a turning point in Germany's approach to its colonial history. Is he right? Um, I would say it's a culmination of a long process that has been ongoing with lots of actors. One important group is exactly people like uh, Mr. Mboro, who are in the diaspora and who have been raising their voice and voicing their concerns, which is very important for Germans to listen to. The second group is the museum people, of course, then scholars, and then finally politicians. And I think that now we are um, harvesting the, the fruits of a long process of negotiation, but it is also a new paradigm. And when you it say a long now. process of negotiation, why has it taken so long? 
Uh, because it has a lot of actors on each side. In Germany, you don't have the central state uh, as the proprietor or uh, owner of the objects, but the local uh, Bundesländer, and you have uh, even cities who are um, in charge of museums. On the other hand, in African countries or in other Uh, former colonies too, you have various actors at play. You have the Nigerian central state, you have the uh, uh, Nigerian um, federal states, uh, sorry, the federal state is the central state, I always get mixed up with the terminology, <laughs> sorry about that. And you have the uh, king. And now they have formed the Legacy Restoration Trust, which brings all these actors together. And that has really given a big push, together with the so-called Benin Dialect Group, which comprises people from Austria, from uh, Great Britain, from uh, Germany and other countries, from the Netherlands and Belgium. So I think that has taken a time behind the scenes. It wasn't so visible, perhaps, but now it's out. And I'm very happy that okay. it's a big leap forward. So it's out, It's you're happy, and people are talking about uh, Bonaventure de Kong, about a dialogue of equals. Is that possible, a dialogue of equals, in this post-colonial context? At least we are striving towards that. Mm -hmm. I think any other thing would be, you know, problematic. We have to speak to each other, We have to find common grounds. And when we find the common grounds, we have to speak as equals. You know, we have to dismantle the asymmetries that exist mm. to be able to speak as equals. You know, the power gradients that have been put in place by the colonial enterprise have to be dismantled. Mm. And we're all working towards that. And I wanted to say thank you to people like Mboro and, you know, and all the other activists that have been going on the streets, you know, for, for decades, you know, advocating for the restitution, the repatriation of some of these so-called objects, you know. So uh, we have to create possibilities of us coming together. And uh, Roland rightly mentioned that, that the people that have been working in the background with all these uh, different groups, but we have to bring these things to the foreground. And I think this is what is happening at the moment. You know, it is coming to the fore, but this is just the beginning. It's the beginning of much more that has to be done. You know, much more have to be sent back much more communication has to be done and I insist on the fact that it has to be done on an equivocal way you know the so-called Augenhöhe you know in German people people discussing what they need to discuss as equals yes yeah uh, I, th I think it, you're talking about the extent to which progress is or not is being made or not being made and how optimistic we can afford to be or not. For me, it was a fascinating and wonderful moment this morning when I read my daily newspaper here in Berlin. It had a headline, Nigeria praises Germany. Nigeria seems to believe that Germany is getting something right here. Well, fair enough. Nigeria should praise Germany uh, because something has been done. But again, that is the beginning. And I have to say, we, oh, we have to complicate the, the conversation a bit more. Nigeria praising Germany doesn't suffice, you know. We have to speak to some of the people to whom this so-called objects actually belong, mm -hmm. you know, and that is why I want the Oba to praise Germany, the Oba of Benin, you know, so the, like the king, the representative of the people of Benin should praise. Then I know something is going on right. I want the people on the street in Benin, despite the multiplicity of opinions, to, mm. to acknowledge, to see that something is happening. And for that to happen, they have to be able to go back to the palace of the Oba and see the Benin bronzes mm -hmm. there. Your thoughts on that on that issue of uh, Nigeria praising Germany, but perhaps yes. uh, you know where do, where do we go next? From you know praise is good, promises have been made, but what happens next? What happens next? Even I'm asking myself why really it has to take still one more year, which I don't understand it. But let us leave that Nigeria praising Germany for doing that. I will just only, when I think about colonialism in Africa, Africa was divided. As far as I know, Nigeria was under British colony. It was not under Germany colony. No, no. And when they themselves, because the objects were looted mm -hmm. by British, and not by Germans. Germans bought from the British, and now they are giving them back. Of course, in thinking that way, 
they need a praise. But me, myself, coming from a country which was colonized by Germans, I am asking up to now, not even a single object has been given back. But for Germans, anyway, also I praise. It is a start. Mm -hmm. It is a start and it gives me now enough room, a space to say, hey, but also you did give back to Nigeria. What about Tanzania? What about Nigeria? What about Cameroon? What about Togo? These countries were totally under German colonial Lazy. Mm. It was a short period of German colonial rule, but, it, but terrible things happened. Uh, let's just let's just rewind a little bit. Yeah, just there is nothing like a short period of colonialism. Colonialism is colonialism. The time, you know, I, I think we have to be very precise about this. Well, you know, the vi well, it's, it's a violent absolutely, act. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, just a week or so ago, we, we now know Germany she, apparently. Frau Lenz wants to say something. Yeah. Let's, yeah. Let's, yeah, I am trying to make myself heard. Uh, I just wanted to support and say I think that we need a multilateral European uh, effort too. Um, it's uh, not very useful to play one colonial regime exactly. off against the other and use that as mutual excuses in the worst case. So I think that in all these initiatives of coming together and speaking on equal terms, it is important to bring in other colonial powers as well. And the methods may have been different, but in the end, it compounds itself to one coloniality in the present. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the different European countries come uh, with different perspectives on their colonial pasts. And I think, OK, Germany can be a trendsetter in some respects, but uh, France and Britain and Portugal, etc., also have their own ways of doing that with much larger diasporas from their former colonies, which changes the terms of debate. Hugely important points you've just been making, but for, for some of our viewers, I'd like to just go back to these, uh, the agreement that Germany has apparently reached now with Nigeria to return at least a share of plundered artefacts known as the Benin Bronzes. We don't know how many. Let's find out, first of all, though, a little bit more about these works of art before talking about the damage done uh, to Africa by European colonialism. To this day, bronze sculptures are still produced in Nigeria, following a casting method that is over seven centuries old and unique in Africa. At the end of the 19th century, the German Empire purchased over 1,000 of these bronze statues from English colonialists. The artworks were plundered by British forces during a raid on a city in present-day Nigeria. But many German museums are proud of these stolen goods, as these valuable exhibits are even listed as UNESCO World Heritage. For decades, African art experts and historians have been demanding they be returned, arguing that the bronzes are part of Nigerian identity. You can't lock up the soul of a people. These ethnological museums are like prisons. Now the German government has cleared the way for the return of the bronzes. To many, this has come as a surprise. What is happening is sensational. We might call it a paradigm shift. Suddenly, returning precious objects to Africa is no longer a problem at all. Can this be Germany's chance to redeem itself from its colonial crimes? That's a big question. Can this be Germany's chance to redeem itself from its crimes? I, uh, I, I... What I heard, uh, a very strong sentence in that report, was these ethnological museums are like prisons. Yes, I do concur with Professor Kumandumbe. You know, they are like prisons, mm. unfortunately. But not only of the souls of people, but also their histories and their knowledges. You know, it might serve, you know, the Europeans to have these so-called objects in there, but many of them are, you know, they have subjectivity and they were meant to be used and, you know, in performances, in rituals, you know. So taking this, depriving a people of this is, 
really, it's in some way killing them, a slow killing, a deterritorialization mm -hmm. of the people. So they don't even know, they, they lose their bearings, you know. And I think this is a very important thing. So we need to free them from these prisons. I, uh, I'm surprised a little bit about the, the mood of optimism at the moment, it, uh, especially among people sort of insiders, especially in Germany, are saying this is a paradigm shift, a big move forward. But really we're talking about uh, a certain number of artefacts will be returned by 2022 at the, at the earliest. Yeah? Uh, I, that doesn't, that, it sounds very fluffy. These, these figures that are being bandied around. It doesn't sound like a, a real change is in the making to me. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds somehow where really I don't understand. They are, are they just only giving a part of it back or are they giving them all? And if it is all, we don't know exactly how many of them were are hidden and so on. And when these heights were are hidden, it is, I'm using that word, prison, because we have not been allowed to these prisons to have even a look at them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just only those ones which are being exhibited, they're just only very few. I don't know, in the Ethnological Museum here in Berlin, they're around, I don't know, five or something like that. I don't know exactly the number, but very few. Mm. But where are the so-called 440? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see what, let's, let's listen to what Carola Lent has to say. She wants to come in from Mainz again. Uh, yes, um, I'm just, wanting to put in a few uh, few distinctions there. The one is that I think the property rights for the objects need to be going back to the source communities. Exactly. And then the question is, of course, within the source communities, they have to define of who is the rightful owner. Is it the central state? Is it the federal state? Is it the king, king's family? Or is it a another community, et cetera, et cetera? then those people have the right to determine whether they want some objects in the world to demonstrate the high quality of art, of culture, of rituals, etc. Mm -hmm. So that is a question of property rights. The second point is, I think that the optimism right now is justified because the return of objects is part, and the return of property rights is part of a larger initiative to bring in new innovative concepts of museums that transnationally cooperate, that bring in artists to open up museums to a larger public, and that make histories of a loss and of suffering visible with objects or the absence of objects visible, etc. And uh, the Goethe Institute has been trying to also promote this in the sense of that African museums among themselves, peer-to-peer -peer learning uh, is in, enhanced or supported. And that that takes place again in exchange with uh, European or German curators. So I think when we think of this return as part of a larger process of thinking uh, new forms of work in and with museums, then it makes sense mm -hmm. and is justified. Sometimes, sometimes I feel that the question of property rights is really a delay tactics. In many of the cases, we actually know who the owners are. You know, the Kingdom of Benin is represented by the Oba of Benin. We could talk to the Oba of Benin directly. You know, although it is part of Nigeria, which is a construct, as we know, barely in a hundred and something years old, but the, the, the Kingdom of Benin has existed for much longer mm. and is still there. We know where Fumban is. We know where the Ngemba people are. We, and, and actually, if we really wanted to speak to them, we would speak to them. You know, I go back to the example of the Afuakum that was sent back to Cameroon in 1974. It went to the people of Com, and it is there, taken care of properly. And I think, you know, we, so I have the impression it's a kind of a delay tactics, you know. There, it's, a, it's, a, it's, 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 it's actually clear who the honours are. Yeah, uh, wants to say something. Mm -hmm. Carol right. That can be the case. Mm -hmm. And I agree uh, with Ms. Ndikung that has often been done. Mm -hmm. But I do think that the thing is that um, a museum in Berlin or in Mainz or wherever cannot 
unilaterally decide to restore something to the Oba because you have the National Museums Council in Nigeria, for instance, which also says that uh, they have a word in, in, in this whole process. So what I think brings the process forward now in Nigeria is that they have the Legacy Restoration Trust funded where all these Nigerians are together in one group and try to sort out this question of whether to bring them to the palace or whether to show them in the museum which is being constructed. And I think um, the important message I take from you um, is that it's not up to the European actors to decide exactly on how that. they sort exactly. that problem Thank in you. Nigeria, Tanzania Thank or you. Kenya. Thank you. Okay. But I do think you have to accept that the Germans cannot give cannot take a decision in saying that, OK, we don't care what the Nigerians say, the government says, we deal directly with uh, the, the, the king's family. I don't think that would work. OK, talk about Germany. Germany's uh, ethnological museums are, we, have, we know, full of art, crammed full of art and culture from around the world. And for a long time, the interests of the countries of origin were simply dismissed. Let's just see some pictures, first of all. Concealment, denial and delay. For decades, this has been the strategy German museums have taken towards restitution claims from Africa. The most striking example is this world-famous bust of Nefertiti, Queen of Ancient Egypt. It was brought to Berlin illegally by German archaeologists. Despite repeated demands for its return from Cairo, the museum and politicians have refused to even negotiate. Ethnological collections in Germany count a total of 1.5 million artefacts, most of them from Africa. Many are missing precise documentation of how they got here. But most of the artworks were looted or stolen. 95% of the collections are gathering dust in archives without ever being exhibited. One positive exception is the Linden Museum in Stuttgart. In 2019, its directors returned to Namibia this whip and Bible that once belonged to national hero Chief Hendrik Witboy. Namibia's president, Gengob, accepted the artifacts in an emotional official ceremony. Do African states have the right to demand that all stolen artifacts are returned? That is the big question. Do that is the big question. Then we go back to history. When the colonial empire took us, they were dealing with the communities where we had kings and kings, which it was as a land, as a country. And you find still these so-called traditional leaders, we still have them and we do appreciate them and they have the full right to talk to the central government exactly. and demand their property back. A problem is lying. These countries, they don't know whom they should demand mm -hmm. these objects who here in German. And this who is, is the talking partner? Who is the talking partner? especially complicated when it comes to the return of human remains, which I know is your specialist area, mm -hmm. an area that is very, very important for you. Tell us a little bit about it. We're, we're, we're short on time. I'm sorry for that, but I yeah. really want to hear about yeah. this from you. Yeah, from the area, for instance, where I come, from Kilimanjaro area, from Kilimanjaro region, the Kilimanjaro Authority, so-called district council, has already given a demand to the German government to return all the human remains and the objects. And when we are talking about district councils, they do belong to the government level. And the government of Tanzania hasn't objected anything. It is, it supports. So a problem is whom really we should forward our demands, so. just only it happens because I know people there in Kilimanjaro and I'm from the same area. That's why I could say direct at least to this or to this. Why there isn't a central law here in Germany which tells all the museums, the universities and the clinics follow this kind of a law to give back the Okay, I can see. I, I just wanted to add that uh, when we talk about restitution, 
we don't talk only about restitution of objects, we talk about restitution of dignity. And that is a typical case. You know, when the people get, you know, the skeletons back, there's a certain return of the dignity. They have the possibility of burying their people with honor, a return of honor. Carola, in mind, would you like to make one for one final point to sign off for us? And next time, we'll, we'll, I'll get you guys here in Berlin for another round. There's so much to say, and Carola will have you here in, in Berlin. Give Thank us 30 you. seconds I'll... of your thoughts. Just keep up the optimism. I think that talking to each other is the most important uh, way forward and Thank being you. respectful and uh, listening to each other's uh, points of view brings us forward. Thank you very much. Just a word from the gentleman here in Berlin too. Thank you very much for joining us, Carola Lenz in Mainz. Uh, it's, I hope we've given you a lot of food for thought. And as I say, I'd like to continue the show a second time round. Let's try and invite these guys along another day. Uh, thanks for joining us. See you soon. Bye bye. Tschüss. <laughs>